Hello, welcome to Reso Coder and welcome to the first part of this tutorial series in which you are gonna learn how to make an app which uses many different Firebase services. It's going to be a chat app and it will use Firestore, Storage, Cloud Messaging and Cloud Functions. Now let's get to a quick overview of what kind of an app you will create. It's a chat app so you can chat with someone and for example let's pick this cool guy over here. And here's the chat, we can even write something so hello again and send it and it's going to be sent and it's pretty nice we can also send photos as you can see here by doing this so let's send this city photo and it's going to be sent after a while which is pretty cool when we go back you can see that we also have an option to go to my account and here we can change our profile picture, so let's change it to, to for example, this one, right, this, this indifferent one. And let's add my full name, so Matej Reshetar. And my bio will be, I'm the Reso Coder actually. And now this is our account. So as you can see, this app is really packed with goodies. Firestore, Storage, Cloud Messaging and Cloud Functions. And with Firebase Cloud Messaging, we are going to be able to do stuff like when a message comes to our account, we can show a notification. I'm not going to demonstrate it here because I don't have it on any other device except on this emulator. And now, without any further ado, let's get right to it. Let's create the new Android project FireMessage and make sure that you have Kotlin support included. And we want to start off with bottom navigation activity. So click on that and next. And that's about it. So now click finish. And here we go. We can preview how our layout will look. And we are obviously going to change it in just a little while. Now, however, we have much more important things to do. And that is to create an app in Firebase. So let's go to a browser. Go to firebase.google.com and log in with your account. And now we want to add a new project. Its name will be FireMessage. And also select the region. For me, it's Slovakia. And hit Create Project. And now when our project is ready, click Continue. And we want to add Firebase to our Android app. Now we want to input our application ID. And if you don't know it, just go to Android Studio. Then open Gradle scripts and build a Gradle for the module app. And here it is, application ID. So let's copy it and paste it inside Chrome. App nickname will be Fire Message. And we can leave this signing certificate SHA-1 blank. You shouldn't leave it blank if you want to use Google as the sign-in provider. However, we are going to use only email provider in this tutorial, so we don't need to use it. We are going to be using signing in with email because of the simplicity. So now we can simply hit register app. Now we want to download Google services JSON and put it somewhere. And now as it writes here, we want to go to Android Studio and switch to the project view. So let's do just that. So up here we have Android and we want to switch it to project. Now we want to open fire message app and we want to go to our downloaded file. Here is Google services.json and drag it to the app folder. Okay. And here we have it. Now we can click continue and we are going to add stuff to build our Gradle files in just a bit so we can click finish. And here we go. The last thing that we are going to do in here in this tutorial is go to the authentication tab and let's go to the sign in method and let's enable email or password. So enable and save. And now we are good to go. Now let's go back to Android Studio. Let's switch back to Android view. And first, let's go to the project build a Gradle. We want to add Google services under dependencies. And in this tutorial series, we are also going to be using Anko Kotlin library. So let's write ext Anko version. And obviously, you can get the code from the link in the video description. Now, let's go to the app module of the build a Gradle file and scroll down to dependencies. And we want to add all of this stuff. So Anko, Anko Design and Anko Coroutines and also Firebase Core, Firebase Firestore, Firebase Auth and Firebase UI Auth. The versions can change in the future so I recommend you to check the official documentation. And also you can get the code from the description. Because we are using Anko Coroutines we also need to enable experimental coroutines for Kotlin and we can do it by pasting this in here. Now let's press Sync Now in the corner. And we are getting an error that we have conflicting versions of support libraries. Now from the preparation for this tutorial series, I know that if we paste these three lines in here, 
we are gonna get rid of all of the problems. So we pasted support v4, card view v7 and custom tabs. And let's again click on sync now and we aren't getting the error anymore. Alright now let's get to the good stuff and that is that we want to change the theme colors. If we go to activity main, we can see that inside the preview the colors are blue. But this is fire message isn't it? Let's make it orange. So let's open up app, res, values and then colors. And we want to change color primary, color primary dark and also color accent. As you can see on the left here they changed from being blue to being nice orange and also amber. These are really nice material colors. Now inside activity main we can see that we have a wrong menu. We have home, dashboard and notifications but we want to have people and my account. So let's do just that. Let's open up menu and navigation which is the menu for this bottom navigation view inside activity main XML. It's specified right here, app menu is add menu navigation. And we want to have just two items. And in this tutorial I am not gonna bother with string resources but you should do it inside the real app because of translation. But we are just gonna simply write people and down here is gonna be my account. And also we should change these icons from being IC home black and IC dashboard black to something else. So let's open up drawable folder. Let's actually delete IC home black dashboard and also notifications. So select them and hit delete on the keyboard. And yes we want to delete them. And now let's add new drawables. So right click new vector asset. Now click on this android icon. And we want to search for people. And select these and ok. And then do this another time. And this time we want to search for account. And select account circle and ok. And now this people item will have drawable I see people black and account will be I see account circle black. Let's also change the IDs of these items. This one will be navigation people and the second one will be navigation my account. Alright and now when we go to activity main XML and look at the preview we can see that it starts to look nice. Let's also go to main activity class by going to Java the first package and then main activity. And let's delete this listener and instead we want to set it right inside on create. So we want to write navigation dot set on navigation item selected listener. And we want to put a when statement in here. And when the item ID of the implicit parameter it and it is of type menu item as you can see right here. It's written right here. It is menu item. So when it's item ID is r dot id dot navigation people. We want to do something in here. So to do. Show people fragment and then we want to return true so just write true. Then when it's r.id.navigation my account we can copy the contents of the navigation people clause but instead we want to show my account fragment. And when the item id is neither of that so else we want to return false. Alright and that's everything that we are gonna do inside main activity. And now let's come up with a mechanism to sign people in. We are surely gonna need a sign in activity so let's create it right now. So right click on the first package, new activity and we wanna select empty activity. Its name will be sign in activity and click finish. And we are gonna use Firebase UI to sign our users in. This means that inside this activity there will be only one button which will initiate Firebase UI sign in. So let's open up the layout file of sign in activity, layout activity sign in. And I am not going to bore you with writing layout so I'm just gonna paste all of it in here. And if you really want to get this layouts code you can get it from the link in the video description. We are basically inside a constrained layout and we have a button which has an id account sign in. And we also change its background tint to be color primary which is pretty nice. But we also have an image view up here and it has a drawable which doesn't currently exist. So let's add it. I have it right here. I see fire emoji and I made this drawable by using an awesome site. It's Android Asset Studio and the link to it will be in the video description. Here you can select any image. So let's select fire emoji. Set its color to be completely transparent so that we have the original colors. And now the asset size will be for example 120 dp. The asset padding will be 0 dp. You can also set its name and now just click download. And it's gonna download it inside the zip format. Then you extract it and you have something like this. I see fire emoji, res. And we wanna copy all of these drawable folders. Go to Android Studio. Click on res here and press Control V. 
and OK. And here we have IC fire emoji in all of the screen densities. Now let's go to sign in activity class. Up here let's define private val sign in providers, which will be equal to a list of auth UI dot IDP config dot email builder because we want to use email sign in. And on it we want to set allow new accounts to be true. Then set require name to be also true. And finally we want to build. Then inside on create we want to get account sign in button. So account sign in dot set on click listener. And whenever the button is clicked we want to start activity for result. But first we want to create an intent. So while intent and that will be equal to auth UI dot get instance dot create sign in intent builder. And we want to set available providers to be the list sign in providers which we have just created. We can also set logo to be our beloved IC fire emoji. So our drawable IC fire emoji. And finally, we want to build all of this. And then inside start activity for result, we want to pass in this intent and then also a request code, which we are going to define up here inside this class. So private val RC sign in, which will be equal to one. And then we want to pass this inside start activity for result. And since we are starting activity for result, we need to get the result back from that activity. So let's override the function on activity result. And first let's call the super class. And then we want to check if request code is RC sign in. And if it is, we want to get the response from that activity. So val response is equal to IDP response dot from result intent. And we want to get it from data intent, which is passed into this function right here. And now if result code is equal to activity dot result OK, we want to show a progress dialog and also remember it. So val progress dialog is equal to indeterminate progress dialog. And we are using Enco here, which is pretty cool. And its message is setting up your account. Then in the next part, we are going to initialize our user inside Firestore right here. But for now, we are just going to put a to do here, which will say initialize current user in Firestore. So for now we can just start the activity and we are again going to use Enco. So intent for we want to start main activity and the flags for this intent will be new task and also clear task. These flags make it so that we cannot go back to the sign in activity after it's finished. This is pretty important because you don't want the already signed in user to be able to sign in again without previously signing out. That's actually pretty ridiculous. And in the next part, when we are actually using Firestore, the initialization process of the current user will actually take some time. So what I am about to write here will make perfect sense. Now it doesn't, but whatever. We want to write progress dialog dot dismiss. Now it's going to be dismissed pretty much instantly after it's created, but in the future it's not going to be so. And else if result code is equal to activity result cancelled. And if this response here is null, we want to simply return. But otherwise, when response dot error and save access operator error code, this save access operator makes it so that when this error is null, we aren't going to get any null pointer exception. That's because it's basically going to ignore all of this after the save access operator. And when the error code is error code that no network, we want to show a long snack bar and let's anchor it to the constraint layout which when we go to activity sign in, it's the root constraint layout, which has this ID. And by the way, long snake bar is a function in Enco. The message will be no network. And when the error code is unknown error, we want to again show long snake bar, but this time it's going to say unknown error. All right, so we've got this. Let's test it, right? Well, actually, let's think for a while. We don't want the user to come into sign in activity every time that he launches the app. When the user is already signed in, we want to take him to main activity directly. For deciding whether to launch sign in activity or main activity first, we need to create another activity, which will be splash activity. So right click on the first package, new activity and empty activity. And this one will actually have no layout file. That's because creating layouts is a pretty taxing process. That's true. Even if you use Enco layouts, we don't want this activity to have any layout. And the name will be splash activity. Now click finish. And inside the onCreate function of this activity, we are going to write just a couple lines of code. Those are if Firebase auth dot get instance dot current user is null. So when we are not signed in, we want to start the activity and let's use Enco here. 
the activity is sign in activity. Otherwise, we want to start main activity. And finally, we want to finish splash activity. Finish closes the currently running activity. But we want to have a logo displayed inside splash activity, so how are we going to do that if we don't have any layout? Good question, we need a custom theme. Let's go to res, values, and then styles.xml. And let's create a new style. Its name will be splash theme, and its parent will be theme.appcompat.noActionBar. action bar. We don't want any action bar inside splash activity, obviously. And it's gonna have one item. Its name is Android, window background. And we need to specify a drawable in here, so let's create that. Open drawable, right click on it, and we wanna create a new drawable resource file. Its name will be splash screen background. And instead of selector, we wanna have layer list. And inside here, we wanna have an item. The drawable of this item will be a white color, so add Android color white. Then another item. This one will contain a bitmap and the source is add drawable IC fire emoji and the gravity of this bitmap will be center. We can even preview how this is going to look. That's pretty nice. Let's go back to styles and the window background will be add drawable splash screen background. Now the last thing that we need to do is to go to Android manifest and main activity will no longer be the launcher activity, so let's cut this intent filter out. And we can even close the tag right here, so slash. And instead splash activity will be the launcher activity, so let's paste all of the contents of the clipboard right here. Also we want to specify a theme for the splash activity, which will be add style slash splash theme. And let's actually put the splash activity up, just like this. And let's also change the label of sign in activity which will be start firing messages. And now we should be all good to go, so let's launch the app inside an emulator. And actually, what kind of a tutorial would this be if I didn't forget anything? We need to go back to build our Gradle for the module app, and down here let's paste this line of code. Apply plugin com.google.gms Google services. This is pretty important line. Now we can actually test it. And as you could see, we had the splash activity here for a while. And now we can continue and sign in. And I'm gonna choose an account. And password will be a super secret 123456. And save. Yeah, save password. And here we are inside main activity, which is currently just full of placeholders. When we run this app again, as you can see right now, we are inside splash screen. And after it, we are taken right inside the main activity because we are already signed in. So and that's it for this tutorial. If you want to get the code written in this video, click on the link in the video description, which is going to take you to resocoder.com. If this tutorial helped you with understanding Firebase Auth, give this video a like and also share it. If you don't want to miss more tutorials like this, and also if you don't want to miss the next parts of this tutorial course, subscribe to this channel and also hit the bell button. If you have any suggestions or questions, leave a comment, follow me on social media, and see you in the next video.